They may have grown up singing gospel tunes in church, but it would be a song about wanting to get freaky with a woman that would take this group to the top of the music charts. R&B group Silk, originally consisting of Timothy Timzo Cameron, James Jimmy Gates Jr., Jonathan John John Rasboro, Tyga Graham, and Albert Allen, came together in Atlanta, Georgia in the late 80s. Like so many soulful groups before them, the quintet honed their singing skills as choir boys in church. At one point, cousins Timzo and Jimmy started their own little gospel group. Also, like many other artists mainly surrounded by gospel, the cousins found other ways to get their fix of secular music, like The Temptations, Levert, New Edition, and Keith Sweat. Keith would actually later play a major role in Silk's career accomplishments, as well as, according to the group, some disappointments. As the boys grew into their teens, the lure of activities and experiences far away from the church became too enticing to ignore. Timzo specifically began using marijuana and eventually ended up behind bars for several months after being convicted of selling a small amount of cocaine. At the same time, a popular fast food chain would begin to serve as the backdrop for the creation of the future platinum selling group. Jimmy and another cousin, Tyga, worked at a local McDonald's together. While practicing their vocals, they noticed a coworker of theirs, John John, also had a pretty good sound, so naturally they invited him to join them. The guys knew they needed a bass, so as soon as Timzo was released from jail, they asked him to come on board as well. The addition of their younger schoolmate, Albert, would be the last piece to the puzzle. After adopting the name Silk, which they believed described their sound perfectly, the group made their rounds around town, performing in churches and talent shows. One talent show in particular would have them cross paths with Gary Big G Glenn. Silk loved his voice so much that they knew right away they needed him in the group. Now a sextet, they soon acquired a management deal with a couple of people who had ties to R&B star Keith Sweat. Silk got the opportunity to meet Keith during a get together at said manager's house. That meeting turned into Keith inviting them into the studio to do some backing vocals. However, as much as Keith loved their sound, he didn't feel like they had a strong lead. Tyga and Albert would end up leaving the group for various reasons, creating the perfect opening for Gary Little G Jenkins, who blew everyone away with his audition, to step right into the lead position. Now here is where things get a little sketchy. According to Silk's management, as detailed in the group's Unsung episode, Keith wanted to not only sign Silk to his record label, Kia Records, distributed through Elektra, but he also wanted a part of management. Not surprisingly, Silk's management wasn't going for that, so the group had a difficult decision to make, stay with their current situation or move on with Keith. They chose to follow Keith. Keith denied ever wanting to manage Silk and says the group's decision to leave their management had nothing to do with him. Did the group make the right choice? Only time would tell. Initially, the goal of the group was to model themselves after fellow R&B quartet, Boys to Men, by focusing on their harmonies. However, Keith had a slightly different idea. He told the LA Times in 1993, I saw their style falling somewhere between the pop sound of Boys to Men and street sound of Jodeci. I could see them singing both ballads and up-tempo material very well and in a real sexy way. Silk released their debut album titled Lose Control in November 1992. The second single, Freak Me, would climb all the way to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and R&B charts and become their biggest hit ever. The group was no doubt grateful for all the attention and success the song was receiving, but they still worried about the controversy they knew it would stir up. Big G told the Washington Post in 1993, it wasn't even supposed to be a single. When we were in the studio, we were very hesitant about recording it. We grew up singing in the church and we were afraid there might be some backlash. People would boycott us and there'd be parental advisories stuck all over the album but the people demanded that song. As it turned out, a radio programmer in Houston got hold of the album and started playing the sexy track. The more airplay it got, the more people wanted to hear it. The group already had another single out called Happy Days, but everyone wanted to hear Freak Me. The album reached the top spot on the R&B albums chart and went double platinum. The group's self-titled second studio album dropped three years later. This time around, Silk was able to claim producer credits, but that also meant parting ways with Keith. When it was time to go back into the studio to record the album, Silk told Keith that they wanted to produce half of it. Keith suggested that they save that goal for their third album because he felt the group still had a lot to prove. 
Silk's take on things was that by having their hands in the writing and producing part of the process, it meant they would also see more money. So far, the only money they were making was on tour. Keith looked at it as a classic case of a recording artist letting a hit record go to their head. Silk left Keith's label and signed directly with Elektra, under the tutelage of Sylvia Rome. The singles off their sophomore effort, I Can Go Deep, Hooked On You, and Don't Rush, were only moderately successful, and even though the album did go gold, that was a far cry from the double platinum achievement of their debut. Many people assume that first comes the hits, then comes the money. Silk had the hits, but unfortunately, the money didn't follow the way they thought it would or should. The success of their debut album did line a lot of people's pockets, just not the ones belonging to the members of Silk. The group decided it was time to take a break from recording to focus more on touring and coming up with a plan as to how they were going to move forward with their next project. Throughout the 90s, Silk also appeared on the soundtracks for films Booty Call, Made in America, A Low Down Dirty Shame, and Blank Man. While on the road in Europe, Silk met up-and-coming R&B diva Brandy and her momager, Sonia Norwood. After seeing firsthand how Sonia modeled her daughter's career, Silk felt that she would be the perfect person to also manage them. They also sought out a new producer. The changes worked. Silk released their third album, Tonight, in March 1999. The first single, If You, made it to number four on the R&B chart and into the top 20 on the Hot 100, peaking at number 13, their best placement since Freak Me. Tonight became their second platinum album, topping the success of their last effort. But no road to success is bump free. Lil G felt it was time for him to go off and do some solo projects. That idea really rubbed the other members of Silk the wrong way. However, they knew there wasn't anything they could do about it. Therefore, they decided to just continue on as a foursome. Or so they thought. Lil G leaving the group meant that Silk was in breach of their contract with their label. So after the group's fourth album, Love Session, was released, they ended up getting dropped. The group continued on as a foursome for the next 15 years and released a couple of albums that only sold an embarrassing number of units. Lil G first went on to pursue other interests, namely acting, before resurfacing musically in 2007 with his solo debut album. He also became a member of another group, a very short-lived R&B supergroup by the name of Blaze, consisting of Terrell Phillips, formerly of Blackstreet, and Mark Nelson and Tony Grant, formerly of As Yet. They did release some sample tunes and claimed to be working on a debut album, but nothing ever came to fruition. Around the same time, Lil G, along with his fellow Silk group members, reconnected with Keith Sweat on his Sweat Hotel Live tour. Then in 2016, Silk, a quintet once again, after Lil G's return, released their seventh album, Quiet Storm. Today, Silk is still going strong 30 years after it all started and with all five original members. They continue to work on new music and tour across the US regularly. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.